this is lapis lazuli. It's a beautiful blue rock, and when you wet it, the blue actually comes through a lot better. So, how do you make this into something usable as a pigment? Well, I have a video about that over there, but I want to talk about something else. I want to talk about how extremely expensive it is to acquire the mineral itself and the entire process to purify that mineral, the powder, into a very blue pigment. Sometimes that pigment you buy as lapis lazuli isn't real. So there are a few ways to check it. One of the ways to see if you are working with synthetic ultramarine instead of lapis lazuli is just by looking at the pigment itself. Lapis lazuli is a mineral and uh, this specific mineral, as do a lot of others, but in this case lapis, is an extremely deep blue. The more you purify it, the less pigment you'll end up with, but the bluer that pigment is, in a very fine form. And all the steps before the purification towards that bluest part is different kinds of levels of blue, and the least blue version is called ash. Lapis ash, or lapis lazuli ash. The purest version, the very, very, very purest version you can imagine, is about, when you want to buy it, 200 euros for one gram. That is a lot of money for a tiny amount of pigment. That is not enough for a dot, or just enough for a dot, but it's not a big dot of pain. So there's a reason that people fake the pigment. They've been doing that for ages. I mean, uh, uh, not really faking it, but finding a a substitute for it. Painters use smalt, for instance, a rather cheap cobalt glass pigment, which wasn't stable, uh, but it was cheap and it gave that beautiful, deep, transparent blue uh, uh, wash or, or a transparent, transparent layer um, that you could also achieve with lapis lazuli, only for a fraction of the price. In 1826, the French government um, had a, a contest uh, to make a good, stable, uh, synthetic version of it. So, uh, from 1826, we, have, we know PB29 as a synthetic ultramarine blue. Chemically, they are the same as a lapis lazuli pigment. The blue element from lapis lazuli, chemically, is the same as the synthetic PB29 pigment. But everything else, that's just one element, everything else is, isn't the same. I once compared it to vanilla extract. Um, vanilla extract is a vanilla bean or a vanilla pod uh, extracted in alcohol, and that's one method. Uh, and all the flavor, or at least from the hundreds of flavor profiles within the vanilla pod, uh, loads of them are being extracted by the alcohol. And you're left with a fluid that you can use as a flavoring substance. Now, what does this have to do with lapis? Um, synthetic vanilla extract is just one of those flavor compounds, the vanillin, that we recognize as vanilla. Just one of them. And a vanilla pod has hundreds of different flavor profiles and uh, different characteristics. 
that make it taste natural. Same with lapis. The lapis lazuli has all kinds of different minerals. Uh, these ones. And synthetic ultramarine just has that one blue part of it, which makes it cheap. Also, you know, the way it is produced and mass produced and uh, everywhere it is being used makes it a cheap pigment for us as artists or painters or paint makers. So, how can you tell the difference? Like I said, you can see it. One is way finer than the other. But even when you would say, I'm going to grind that natural lapis lazuli, very fine, you run into a problem. As I was saying, the finer you make it, if you're, you know, if you have, if you're starting with a very blue pigment, blue grind of, of lapis, if you make that finer, you lose color. Um, I've had a discussion with someone about this. And the only w way I could, uh, I could kind of explain this was glass. Glass is transparent, has no color. So maybe it's not the best example, but if you shatter glass, but if you shatter glass, and break all those shards up into tiny pieces and even finer and finer, you end up with something that looks like a wide sand. The surface area that has the breaks and the things in it make it appear white. Same goes for lapis. You lose color, you lose the intense blue when you make it a finer grind. Um, you can get a very fine blue, as I was saying, but the best version of that is 200 euros for one gram. And that's not that's not doable for me as a business. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm making my own lapis lazuli pigment, the Fra Angelica blue. I've bought a lot of different pigments, lapis pigments, finest, purest, bluest, uh, I don't know under which name they are on the market, but a uh, Fra Angelico. And they were lovely, but quite expensive. Um, you had different grades of, of blueness, uh, and one that says purest was less blue than one that says finest, and one that said Fra Angelico. Uh, was actually less blue than one that said second grade. So th there was a lot of confusement for, for me when it came to that pigment. So I put them under a microscope. And quickly I found something that kind of amazed me. Um, I found that one of them stood out in a lot of ways. That's why I acquired my microscope in the first place. I wanted to have a closer look at things, things I didn't trust for other reasons. Um, there was one pigment that was really cheap compared to the others. Way more blue than the others as well, which is a weird combination. So it's m more blue or more vibrant, but cheaper. It's finer, which is a weird combination with that. And it just fell off to me, feeling it between my fingers, uh, uh, working it on the slab, swatching it. If there were kind of red flags for pigments, uh, that was kind of my version of it. I, I didn't trust it. Um, 
I contacted the uh, the company and they assured me it was uh, real and pure and uh, most of all secret on how to do it, um, which was a kind of issue for me because I had loads of different brands and samples of the purest lapis that all kind of pigment companies were selling and this was the only one that had all those qualities uh, that entire package that just didn't feel right to me so microscope um, I compared them and like I said I am not a scientist I am I'm, I'm nothing near an expert when it comes to this subject. I know a lot about pigments. I know how to work with pigments. Uh, I have a lot of pigments, but the things that I see, the things that I, uh, whether it is under the microscope or on my slab or on a swatch, the things that I find, I'm not a source that you can trust in a scientific way. I'm sharing my findings here. And uh, that's actually all I'm doing. So let's have a closer look. 